are all just one great being. Yeah. You know, that's what they forget. We're not separate. We're all, the universe is probably one cell. Wait a minute. I think Terrence Howard has completely found universal truth. Like, I did not know this man was like Einstein level intelligent. Like, this man is completely mind boggling. Like, the way that this man can articulate himself and break stuff down. Like I'm in a high level class college. It doesn't make sense. Who who knew Lucius had it in her? So basically Terrence Howard went on the Joe Rogan podcast and basically he has blown everybody's mind. He has went on this, this platform and I haven't even fully watched the whole podcast myself. But from what I've seen with all the clips that are going around, this man is out here. I'm like, like really dropping gems, like lost forsaken information. <laughs> and one particular clip spoke out to me and I think it truly represents me and my platform. This was the particular video. They're all just one great being. Yeah. You know, that's what they forget. We're not separate. We're all, the universe is probably one cell inside of some super organism. Right. And we're just yeah. little, little who, you know, yep. little who's like, <laughs> like, like Horton hears a who and trying to make sense of it. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing that we're making sense of it. But everything is just one great being. We're all God. That's what Jesus was talking about. That's that's what that's what you know Buddha was talking about. It's it's recognizing the divinity in you. This, this video spoke volumes to me because this truly is the universal truth that everything is connected. All is within all. And this is something that a lot of religious people, a lot of people who are narrow-minded cannot truly grasp is that there is no one perception or one perspective or one expression to God. There is no just one path or one destination to truth. Truth is one. Truth is whole. You cannot deny the truth. You cannot change the truth to fit your way of living. But there are many different ways in which truth is expressed. There are many different ways in which truth can be explained. There are many different ways in which truth can be communicated. And so within truth, you have different genres. Within truth, you have different colors. Within truth, you have different variations of lifestyles and colors and languages and culture and dances. You have diversity within truth. You have variety within truth, but truth is one. And this is something that a lot of people can't grasp because they always think that their their way is the highway. <laughs> that you have to submit to my Jesus. You have to submit to my book. You have to submit to my religion, my way of seeing things. That's the ego. Jesus didn't even speak like that. There was a story in the Gospels of a man who was basically going around doing the same things that Jesus was doing and that the disciples were doing. And the disciples went to Jesus and were saying like, oh, there's this man out here. He's out here healing the sick. He's out here giving sight to the blind. He's out here moving like you. And we told him, yo, you need to come and follow us. You need to follow him. And he didn't want to. And Jesus was like, what's the issue? Those who are not against us are for us. And I truly believe that particular person that is spoken within the context of that particular story was somebody of a different faith, somebody of a different system. And that is how we should go about things when it comes to people of different spiritualities, of different concepts, of different ways of looking at life. I was having a conversation with one of my friends last night and we came up with this analogy, which I think is very beautifully said. Whenever I get the chance to have her on a platform, it's going to be magnificent the way that she breaks this down. But I was telling her, if you were raised up on blueberries and somebody else was raised up on strawberries, you can't shun somebody for liking strawberries. You know what I'm saying? You can't, and the person who likes strawberries, you can't shun that person for liking blueberries because of how they were raised up. And just because you like strawberries and you like blueberries doesn't outcast somebody else who like oranges. 
if everybody was created to live a certain way or a certain path in this only strategic, only linear way, if everybody was just made to be linear, everybody would go to the store and buy the same product. Everybody would go to the store and buy the same type of food, the same type of products, the same type of clothing. Everybody would, hi, I'm normal. You know, it's a funny thing, Squidward. I smoothed out the edges of my personality and the rest just followed suit. Now I am utterly normal. Everybody will walk around like clones. Everybody will walk around doing the same thing, listening to the same thing. But that's not the way that the world was shaped. That's not the way that the world was created. The world is so much more complex than that. Do you see what I'm saying? The way that the world operates, you can't even explain it. Words can't even describe. There's not enough words to describe the way that the way, the way that the way, the way that this world works. In the Vedas, there's a phrase called the neti, neti, not that. And what I've grown to understand from that particular perception is that you can't put a name, you can't put a label on infinite source. You can't put a name, you can't put a label you can't identify it. <laughs> you can't strategic. You can't place it in a box. You can't restrain it. You can't limit it. This perception, this consciousness that we call God or Yahweh or whatever name that you want to give this supreme consciousness. But so many people have given it a name. So many people have said this is the way that you are to know about the state of consciousness. This is the way to know this particular power called God. So you've created books. You've created denominations thousands hundreds of thousands of denominations you have built churches around the world you have built temples synagogues mosques etc to try and get in contact with a particular source that's been within you from birth by divine right you are god a walking manifestation a walking vessel of supreme consciousness but religion and society and your mother and your father have told you that God exists outside of you and that you have to reach him and you have to find him. All you got to do is get back in connection. All you did, you just lost connection. You have lost connection somewhere down the line. You used to be in tune when you were younger, when you were sprouting out from the womb, but you have lost contact. And the reason why you feel like there is a blockage or the reason why you feel like you can't hear God is because you don't know that you are. So you looking for like really, really conceive this. You have existed. Your spirit, your soul has existed before any religion, before any book, before anybody could even give a name for God. You existed. And I'm not talking about the physical body. I'm talking about your spirit, your power. The infinite source that exists within you. It existed, it, it existed before, the, before even the beginning. <laughs> it was there. And you want to be so egotistical. You want to be so narrow-minded. You want to be so arrogant to tell another person how they should express the source within them. You want to be so stuck up and so big headed and I wouldn't know <laughs> that you want to tell another person how they should have a divine intimate connection with their God, with our God. Does that make sense? Does that make any type of sense to you? Everybody has a different personal relationship with the divine source. You want to tell this person you should call your God, your father, this name. You should call your mother this name. How are you? Who are you to tell another person how they should identify and communicate with their divine source, with our divine source? I'll tell you straight like this. My relationship with my mother and father is different from my brother's relationship with our mother and father. Does that make his relationship better than my relationship? No. But we have individual experiences, individual settings with our mother and father. Everybody have individual components, individual settings for their personal divine connection with the divine source, with supreme consciousness that we call God. 
and we have different names to identify this source. Who are you to say that your name and your book is better than another person? I think that makes sense. This is why I am omniest, because there is no one truth or one expression of truth being better than another person's expression of truth. Each individual spiritual system out here that claims that they have a divine connection with the divine source has a set of truth in it, but they also have a set of dogma in it as well. Neism doesn't just identify the truth in all the spiritual systems, it unveils everything, all the, the, the perfections and the flaws within each spiritual system. And it gives you the opportunity and the privilege for you to define your own set of beliefs, to create your own spiritual system, your own religion. Because all religions, all spiritual systems, all books were man-made. And that's not a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing if you use it properly. And made things are beautiful. It's a part of our divine right <laughs> to be creators. But the things that we create within this world can benefit us. It can be to our advantage or it can be to our demise. It can help us build or it can help us destroy. You see what I'm saying? So just because the word of God is man-made, all these particular texts are man-made, that's not a bad thing. There were people before us for thousands of years that basically wrote down mystical things, mystical and, and hidden information and teachings for us to understand for thousands of years to come. But people have taken advantage of the things that were written and meant for one purpose and they flipped it and used it for another. And here you are thinking that Adam and Eve messed up the whole world because of a snake and an apple. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like you think snakes could talk. You think the world was made in seven days. You believe Noah could fit all these goddamn animals. You believe that Noah could fit all these goddamn animals on a boat for months on this ship. You think Jonah survived in the belly of a whale for three days. Hey y'all come look at this. <laughs> y'all hear yourselves. You could read. Zeus and Greek mythology and all the other different mythologies of the world and understand that oh yes this is clearly mythology but because a certain set of people have historicalized mythology and mystical teachings there are people out here who have to reach and stretch in order for them to try and make sense of certain things that were never meant to be taken literally and you have people out here who are architects and people who are historians who are trying to historicalize something that was meant to be mystical. So here you are playing Dora the Explorer around Israel in, <laughs> in certain parts of the Middle East. Oh, this is where Jesus must have lived. And this is where Jesus was baptized. And this is where uh, children of Israel went around here. And this is where Moses was. It was never meant. The, the information in that book was never meant to be taken that way. But here you are, the stupid Negro, doing that. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven would not be seen with observation. And here you are thinking Jesus is coming back. Huh? Jews believed that the kingdom of heaven was going to come back and that there was going to be some type of messianic figure basically to come and reunite Israel. Jesus said, I don't know where y'all got that from, but this kingdom of heaven is not going to be seen with the human eye. This kingdom of heaven will not come with observation. You won't be able to see it, touch it, feel it, smell it. The kingdom of heaven is within you. The first message he told his disciples was to go out there into the world and tell them that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is among you. In the Gnostic Gospels, he tells Mary that the Son of Man exists within you. And you are supposed to follow after that. But you have been made to think of yourself lower than. And so you sitting up in church singing about how you're a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who could save everybody and you messed up at the first part because jesus told you you were the light of the world jesus told you that you are perfect as your father in heaven is perfect the works i do you can do also and greater what does that mean have you ever like really sat down to really take thought on what he was saying <laughs> or are you so caught up with religion that you always thinking of yourself as a sinner in hopes of being made holy in the eyesight of God. When you were made holy from the start, you were made to believe that you was born a sinner. 
that you were destined for hell, death, turmoil, but you were made holy and perfected and your spirit and your energy is whole and it's perfected. And until you come to realization of that, your life isn't going to go the way that you think it is. You're so caught up in fear and worry and your anxiety, you have forgotten who you are. You have taken on a false identity of who you are. And so that's why your life doesn't go the way that you think it is supposed to go. Take upon your true identity and maybe things will start shifting. But telling yourself, oh, I'm, I'm still a sinner, but thank you, Jesus. In your Bible, it tells you that Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be a sinner, was made to be of a person full of sin so that you, who was a sinner, could now be seen as somebody who never sinned, so that your slate could be wiped clean, so that you can have the gift of eternal salvation. You walking around saying you a sinner, you identify with the wrong person. <laughs> you are within the body of Christ. Isn't that not what it says in your Bible, that you part of the body of Christ? That you resurrected with Christ. If you resurrected with Christ, you're supposed to have the same power of Christ. You're supposed to have the same identity as Christ. That means you're righteous. That means you are a walking, living manifestation of God. But you're a sinner. I'm a nobody. It says in your Bible, you are a royal, or a royal priesthood, but you're a nobody. I don't even believe, not on a literal context, I don't even believe Jesus was a literal person. I believe in the mystical aspect of it. Because how, how is it that... You could have Jesus and I can have Jesus and you say Jesus is within the heart, but Jesus supposedly ascended into heaven in a physical body. Christ can't be within me and be within you and you can't be within the body of Christ. And yet Christ ascended into heaven in a physical body. This is because these teachings and these principles and these stories were not meant to be taken literal. And mythology doesn't discredit Jesus. Mythology actually gives more credit to Jesus. It actually makes, that's where the magic happens. Because it is within your belief. It is within your knowing that you can become the Christ. That's the whole purpose is for you to be the Christ. Not for you to worship Christ. Not for you to pray the Christ. It's for you to be Christ. To be Jesus. Whenever you study the hero's journey and you study mythology. And even just the philosophical teachings of this with the teacher student or the master and the student the master always wants the student to become the master the teacher wants the student to ascend higher than they have that's why it says when the student is ready the teacher will appear but when the student is truly ready the teacher will disappear you are supposed to be the master over your own life the god over your own life and yet people were giving kanye west hell because he says i'm the god of me Blasphemous, blasphemous. Oh my God. They're speaking facts is in the Bible. It's in the book. <laughs> but yet you out here acting like the Pharisees. Ain't that so ironic? All these Christian folk thinking they acting more like Jesus. And yet you acting like the people Jesus was against. Tragic. Anyways, I think I've said enough as it is. <laughs> if you like what I had to say, let me know how you feel about this particular concept and message in the comments below don't forget to hit that like button all right and before you go hit that subscribe button as well turn on your notifications for all next upcoming content and but but before you go wait hold on before you go check out this right here because you don't want to miss that one. i did i did do my thing with that one i ain't gonna fret <laughs> till next time